Hello and welcome to my uh, overview of the E-Flight F-14 top cap. Probably the plane that I'm the most excited about to fly this upcoming season. So it came out um, last uh, fall, late fall actually. I got it um, just, I think I got it the day before Thanksgiving actually. It arrived then, which is great for Turkey Day to have the Tomcat, which is affectionately known as the Turkey, um, because of how it looks on final approach um, landing on the carrier. And um, I've just been looking forward to this plane for so long. I put my pre-order in as soon as it became available. I've been flying it um, in real flight since uh, Real Flight 9.5 came out and flying it now in Evolution. And this thing has got me so excited. I saw it fly for the first time at RC Fest and I knew instantly like, yes, I absolutely have to have this aircraft. So um, when I first got it, my plan was is that I was gonna strip it down and repaint the entire airplane as one of the Jolly Rogers, uh, you know, actually the one from uh, the movie, The Final Countdown, um, which is one of my favorite schemes of all time. It's that bright, uh, high gloss, uh, gull gray on top, it's white on the bottom, it's got the black tails with the skull and uh, crossbones on it. Absolutely, probably the best paint scheme for a Tomcat ever. High visibility, it would show up great in the sky, uh, perfect for an RC plane. I mean, th I could. there's really no negatives to, um, to that scheme. Uh, what really changed my mind was the fact that this aircraft here that actually is the factory scheme um, is actually pretty historically significant. Um, it is the CAG aircraft um, for the bounty hunters. Um, and this one here known as Bullet uh, 100 um, was used extensively in Operation Iraqi Freedom which um, since it is uh, you know spring of uh, 2023 it was 20 years ago that uh, this aircraft was uh, was involved in that um, that conflict or, or um, flying operational missions and it dropped uh, more bombs in uh, operation Iraqi freedom than any other f-14 tomcat um, and I think that's kind of interesting because like it's the keg aircraft which is typically you know if you consider like that's probably not going to be the one that gets the most number of missions right because the these aircraft, um, the CAG aircraft are, tend to be a little bit different, right? They tend to be cleaner, better, you know, they don't fly as many uh, missions. They, they're kind of signed off to the, uh, the CAG um, and they, they have the high visibility graphics on them that you see here, the full color versus the, uh, the normal low vis, all gray aircraft. So for that, uh, for that aircraft to have more bombs dropped than anything else, I thought was pretty significant. Um, so it's historically, from that standpoint, an important Tomcat and I just, I couldn't quite bring, bring myself to repaint it. Uh, uh, so I, I decided, you know what? I'm gonna keep the factory scheme. Uh, in fact, I picked up this book while waiting for my Tomcat to arrive, and this is actually what made me change my mind. Um, fantastic book on uh, the F-14 Tomcat units that were flown in our Operation Iraqi Freedom. And right here on the cover is Bullet 100, the aircraft that uh, E-Flight chose to model for their F-14. So reading more about the aircraft and, and learning the significance of it, it made me decide, you know what, maybe, maybe I won't repaint this aircraft. Maybe I'll have to get a second one in the future and repaint that one in the Jolly Rogers color. But I'm gonna do a proper scheme on this aircraft using the factory graphics. So uh, I started off with uh, getting a hold of uh, Cali Graphics and adding a few extra decals to the aircraft, right? So the factory dec decals are already here, but I made some modifications to it. And so starting up at the nose, um, the 100, the um, call sign numbers, were too far up on the radome. So I actually had them removed and pulled them back a little bit. They are a little low compared to what they should be, but that's because the battery hatch um, cutout is there and I'd have to move them up into that battery hatch to um, get them in exactly the right spot and decided that, yeah, that's probably a little sketchy. So uh, I decided just to move them back and keep them low on the, uh, on the fuselage. I also added some additional um, decals around the, uh, the rescue symbol as well as the uh, warning notification that this aircraft is equipped with ejection seats. And then I have all the mission markings of all the bomb missions that uh, this aircraft flown. Uh, interesting enough, um, those bomb missions were not actually painted on the aircraft until the very end. Uh, normally you think of like World War II planes that every time the aircraft would return home, you know, the ground crew run out there and they're painting the bomb symbol on the aircraft to denote that it has completed a mission. Um, from what I understood in the book, it seems like this aircraft flew without those mission markings until the very end and then they went through and painted them on. So I did go through and add those. I think they're pretty awesome. 
Um, I think that mission markings are, are very cool to add anyway. I like to add them to my World War II planes and uh, my, my A-10s have them as well. And I thought, yep, I need to have those on my Tomcat. So Kelly made me those decals there. They're available uh, from her. I also got the, uh, the crew names uh, put on here as well. And she made those decals. Uh, it looks like this aircraft may have had a couple different crews that flew it over the time, but I went with uh, the ones that I could find the most pictures of. And so I added the crew names to the, uh, the canopy rail. And then I had her make the, um, um, the we call them like slime lights or the um, night vision lights. These, uh, these are the little uh, green slivers of light that are on the, uh, the nose. Uh, fuselage underneath the uh, the wing boots as well as up on the tail so she made the graphics so it does not have a lot of new details added to it but it didn't really need much because I kept on whatever the factory had uh, one last thing I did have her add is um, these um, cooling vents that are up here by the uh, kind of where the uh, fuselage and canopy kind of come together the cockpit kind of come together to the uh, glove area so I added those as well so like I said didn't need a lot of um, Details. What I did do is spend a, a lot of time weathering the aircraft. Uh, now, if I was going to repaint the airplane completely, I would have added a lot of pre shading um, down to the aircraft and then airbrushed over the top of it. And that would have given it that would be considered like a marbled effect, which is really how the low gloss paint um, wears um, when it is in active duty. It fades, it chips, it gets touched up all the time. It's dirty, it's hard to keep clean. So it gives you like this patchwork look of different shades of gray all over the aircraft um, as it wears. It's extremely tough to replicate that that look exactly. Uh, but I wasn't going to repaint the entire aircraft, so I had to get a little creative in my solution. So what I ended up doing is spending um, really most of the winter um, using different color pastels and making up all the panels, making them dirty, and then going through and then using different shades of gray, actually simulating the touch-up that would go on around each of those panels as they get popped open, they get worked on, the panels get put back down, and there's chips around there so to keep it from corroding when exposed to, um, to the salt air, the, uh, the crews would have to spray paint around that area with um, new paint. And that paint varied in color dramatically. Sometimes it was darker gray, sometimes it was lighter gray, sometimes it, that stuff had faded, sometimes it got dirty. It was a mix match of all these different things going on on the aircraft, which makes these things really hard to replicate. So I just continued to go around and I would make all the panels dirty and then I'd paint over them with a different color gray and then I'd make them dirty again, go over it with light gray and I just alternate back and forth. And what I was basically doing is replicating what would happen to the real aircraft. It gets dirty, uh, they take a panel off, it gets chipped, they put that panel back on, they have to spray paint around it uh, to seal it back up and keep it from corroding so you have dirt and you have fresh paint and then that gets dirty and they pop it back off again and it just keeps layering up and that's what happens to these aircraft. So to replicate that I used different shades of gray hand brushed on um, over the top of um, different color gray pastels. So um, the, the look is fairly convincing. I mean, it's not going to be, it's not going to win a model contest by any means, but uh, it's surprisingly from a little bit of a distance really shows that the aircraft is different than it looked out of the box. Uh, the other thing I noticed while working on this is there's a lot more panel detail on this airplane than you realize when you see the pictures of it. If you just, let's say you go to Horizon Hobby or eFlight.com and you look at the pictures of the airplane, you really don't see all the incredible detail uh, on the aircraft for all the panel lines. Um, they just don't really show up, right? Being an all gray aircraft, um, they just don't have a lot of definition to them. But when you get the aircraft in person, you can see that. And by weathering uh, those panel lines, you get to kind of make them pop a little bit and it brings a lot more depth to the aircraft. I did go through the, um, all over the, uh, the, the flaps and the slats and spoilers and um, all the panel lines, I uh, made them a little bit darker uh, and, and also simulated some oil spills and oil staining effect that comes from those. And that really kind of made the, uh, the surfaces look a little bit more uh, noticeable. I also added the, uh, the uh, anti-slip uh, wing walkways up here on top of the, uh, the air intakes. I just uh, masked those down and used um, dark gray paint and then just weathered them uh, with charcoal as well. So none of this was airbrushed. This was all done by hand brushing or by um, charcoal pastels of varying different um, colors. To simulate the, uh, the dirt that you get from when the wings sweep back and forth and uh, 
these six, these uh, movable panels rub up against the uh, the wing. I just simply uh, activated the uh, the wing sweep feature on my NX8 while putting some pastels along this area and doing that just a few times, it replicates the uh, the curvature and the dirt exactly where it needs to go to simulate these wings coming in and out as they would um, in normal use. I also painted the, uh, the wing um, inflatable bags. Uh, those actually inflate when the wings are retracted in order to uh, seal that area up and they get very dirty and they're usually a dark gray with some brown um, dirt on there as well. So I added that. Um, and when I got done with the aircraft, I was pretty happy with the weathering look, but it still just didn't really look like a Tomcat to me. It was still missing something. And I realized that the glove pylons with the sidewinders on them, I needed to have those. So uh, thankfully, I was able to um, scour the internet and was able to find uh, 3D print files for um, the glove pylons. And I just went with um, two sidewinders on there to try to really kind of reduce the amount of A, weight and B, drag on the aircraft. I didn't want to make this thing too draggy full of scale bits. So I added those, I glued those into place. Um, they, they, by doing that, it's amazing how much they just, it just transformed the airplane like almost instantly. I'm like, yep, now it looks like a Tomcat. It looks like the way it needs to be. I wish it would have had the glove uh, pylons right from the factory that were like, you could slide them in and off. Um, Cause I think that not having those, the airplane just didn't, it just didn't look right. Um, and no matter whatever I did with all the weathering, I couldn't get away from the fact that without the glove pylons on here, the airplane just didn't look like a Tomcat to me yet. So I added those. Um, while I was doing that, I actually decided to go ahead and add the um, the Phoenix rails underneath here. You can see those there. And if you look, they have uh, two laser-guided um, bombs located in there. Now, the laser-guided bombs are actually from a 132nd scale F-14 Tomcat. Um, they're relatively close enough in scale that I could get away with putting them in there. And I actually created a little balsa uh, stanchion that the uh, bombs are glued to and then those press into the Phoenix rails and I can remove them for flight. So they don't actually, they, they're not going to stay on there for flight ops, but considering that this aircraft was primarily used as a bomber, I decided that uh, putting those um, laser guided bombs on the Phoenix rails would indeed look correct. And then of course I fabricated um, the gear doors and some front landing gear. The only thing it's missing is the uh, the TCS pod and the IR pod on the nose. Um, just because I haven't found a great way to do that yet. Uh, for whatever reason, they're very difficult to find in 132nd scale, and I haven't found a really good looking uh, 3D print file for those yet, so it is missing the pod on the nose, and eventually I will take care of that. So, um, yeah, so far, like, I'm just, I'm really happy with how the aircraft turned out. It definitely looks um, considerably different than it did from the factory, even though it still maintains the, um, the factory scheme. Um, and I expect this aircraft to look just, um, just awesome uh, in the air with all these little modifications done to it. I'm probably gonna fly it with uh, wings out for a very long time, just because of the fact that um, with the wings swept, uh, it's quite a bit quicker, it rolls much quicker, especially when you have safe off. Um, and I want to make sure that uh, nothing happens to my Tomcat. So I'll be flying it uh, with the wings out for, for quite a while, but that's okay because I have been wanting to fly a Tomcat ever since getting into this hobby and E-Flight has finally made that um, possible. Um, I do plan on flying it um, with the landing gear on using a fabric runway uh, for quite a while, uh, only because um, hand launching with my small hands is gonna be a little difficult. So I'm probably gonna have to add some sort of a grip that I can get um, my hands on on the, um, the aircraft to, to throw it. Um, it's just not quite, I don't have the ability to get a good, nice good grip on the outside of the nacelles to throw it. So I'd rather not uh, put any risk on the aircraft by having a bad throw. So I will fly it with the landing gear, which will be totally fine. The aircraft, uh, uh, with a little bit of uh, detail work to the, uh, the landing gear, they definitely look a little bit more realistic as well. And I think just by doing that, I'm much happier with how the aircraft uh, turned out. Uh, this thing is really going to look awesome in the air. It's going to look awesome at the field. And it looks awesome just sitting here on my table as well. So um, the E-Flight Tomcat is definitely you know, a must have if you're a Tomcat fan. And while yes, there are other Tomcats on the market, um, this one is what I'd consider an attainable aircraft. It's not priced 
so far out of the range for a lot of us. Plus, um, with the advanced flight controller in it um, and safe, it really makes it uh, something that a lot of us have the capability to fly uh, versus a more advanced Tomcat um, that's probably a little bit beyond what a lot of us have for ability to fly as well as a field that we can fly it at. So for me, the E-Flight Tomcat's absolutely perfect. And with a little bit of modeling work, um, you can really make the aircraft just really come to life a lot more than it does just straight, straight from the factory. So if you guys got any questions or comments on um, how the aircraft uh, was weathered or how it turned out or any questions on the Tomcat in general, by all means, leave your uh, comments uh, below and I'll be more than happy to, uh, to answer them.